All right, so this is part two of the tutorial, and I've got a fancy, fresh new moto scene here. Um, in part two, we're going to bring images into the mix and show how we can use those to control aspects of the particle uh, uh, grid, and also touch on shading. There's a lot of really subtle shading going on in these images. So part two, we'll not be creating an image um, this complex. It'll be part three, but we it's just easier to break it down into a smaller project so we can see how we do these before bringing it into this sort of larger, more complex project. Um, so part two here, I'm going to build this uh, graph, which is going to be using multiple sieves and random nodes and multiple falloffs and also um, one of different scaling nodes and uh, random nodes in there to get us what we need. Um, you're going to need to slash and burn this. It's going to wind up something like this, like this horrible horrible looking actually previews pretty quick with these guys so that's a really horrible looking smiley face with some really bad hair but uh, the aspect I'm trying to get here is you know if you look at uh, the images done by Lee Griggs there's a uh, a lot of his sort of texture his look on his um, images is you've got the lower altitude um, uh, uh, prototypes of a much smaller scale than the higher altitude one. They're also a, a higher density. So we're going to figure out how to um, create a higher density of uh, uh, prototypes down at these lower altitudes and how to scale, isolate and scale up these higher altitude ones. And then we'll take a look at the shading, how we get um, some subtle variation, not just between the different altitudes, but also even along the length of the um, of some of these uh, prototypes have some shading going up and down the length. Some of that's due to the lighting. Some of it's due to, it looks like subsurface scattering. But um, anyway, there's a lot going on here. It's not just different colors uh, for different prototypes. All right, so this guy. Um, let's go back to the empty scene. And we'll kill this guy. We'll slash and burn there. Goodbye. And I'm going to, of course, just start with the cube model and cube there. Um, I'm going to shrink it down quite a bit. Remember poly mode, not item mode. Shrink that bad boy down. Doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll just do 10%, but you know we're going to eyeball it at the end of the day. But um, I think that's a good way to start. And call that prototype. And uh, drag this dude down over here. Let's throw in a, a generator and of course a replicator really need to put a replicator over here. <laughs> there's no place in the, uh, there's no icon for replicator anywhere. It's weird. All right, so grab these two guys, put them down here. I do my weird thing by putting my mesh below my light and camera because it just makes me feel better about myself. And I'm going to hook these guys up. Particle source and prototype. Maybe Skippy. Okay, so hide my prototype um, and my particle generator. Hide that because I hate that locator. We'll, let's do a little bit more dense here. 64, 1, 64, 1, 0, 1, so it's centered. And then I'm going to have to actually spread these guys out a bit. Um, let me just go to a top view here. Actually, when you zoom in, you can kind of see when they finally separate. S separate. Not yet. Not yet. When will it happen? Not for a while. Oh, we have not separation yet. Not yet. And this tutorial has gotten so boring that everybody is now turning it off because it's just some guy doing this. Okay. There's probably an easier way of doing that, but we have separation. So I just want to separate it a little bit um, just for now. We're going to actually tweak this later, but there we go. Okay, great. Double tap, escape. You'll double tap. Um, and we've got our, our array there. Okay, so I'm going to just sort of get trucking along here. So um, first the thing we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to be using an image ultimately, of course, to get our sort of terrain-like look. And so we'll start with a simple image. So I made a really simple image. Um, there is no image loader on the setup tab, which always bugs the crap out of me. So uh, let's go to the render tab real quick and load up an image, add a clip, load an image. You all know how to do that. Uh, smiley and we got a smiley face double click I made that in Photoshop because I'm an expert 
Okay, so that'll work for us right now. I'm actually gonna pull my camera out a little so I can see this guy. Yeah. In fact, I'm even gonna stay here for a second. No, actually, I'm not. I'm gonna go back to uh, setup tab. Um, all right, so we have a image that we're going to use. So how do we put that into play? Well, uh, I'm gonna set, grab this guy here and let's put in a basic and we get the basic and we can add a linear fall off like that, drag that in, hook up the linear fall off to the basic. And right now it comes in default on, on Z, let's put it on Y, select the range, press C in item mode and drag that out to, let's go to top view, um, cover up our, just over the edges, just a little bit of our array, and going back here. Now, you can kind of guess what I'm gonna do here. How do you bring images into this? Well, you use a, a item mask and a fall off, so right click, and we'll create an item mask. And over here in shading, in the effects section, this is what this is for, there is a item mask for linear fall off. We'll add layer, image map, load image. Actually, I don't wanna load the image. I already loaded the image, add layer, image map, use clip browser. There's Mr. Smiley face. And if take a look at the texture locator. Um, comes in as a spherical map. We do not want spherical. We want front, we do not want front projection. <laughs> we want uh, planar. On Y, and you know, we take a look, go up top. Um, this is our texture locator, right? So our texture locators are visible right now. So our texture locator, if it is not visible, you can um, toggle texture locators in your view like that. And so it may not be visible by default actually, but you know, let's toggle those on and go to the scale key and just scale this guy out. Again, uh, just like the fall off, we'll get that going there just like that. If you want a little bit of, let's make this fall off more visible actually. I'm gonna hide my texture locators right now, but um, the linear fall off, um, I'll go over to, this, to display and draw options and user over wireframe and let's get a nice shiny color. And now it's, it's a little bit more visible there at least than it was before. Um, not that visible, but a little bit at least. Uh, okay, so we've got that. And we have a fall off operating on this particle modifier. So you can guess if I go over here to my translations and Y. So I have my particle modifier active here. And if I select the Y channel and, and uh, press the channel hall and start translating those up, you can see Mr. Smiley Face happening, right? Um, I'm actually gonna control swipe to slash, and then here's where I'm just infuriated <laughs> with the uh, um, Moto's user interface where they replaced the awesome slash and burn shortcut with that stupid massive pie menu, that tab switcher that nobody uses and sucks and I hate, and I tried to get them to kill it in beta, but they wouldn't. Got a little bit of an issue with that, if you hadn't noticed. I haven't let that go. Okay, but if you press uh, control shift and use your Prancel tail to press the tilde key. You can get this uh, menu here and bring up a preview. Uh, or if you don't want to do that, you can always just go over here and, and under, eh, what is a preview application? Preview an application? Yeah, it is preview under application. You do it that way, but uh, preview is super fast with um, uh, P mods and whoops, I lost my guy there. So we'll go back to point one or point two. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Um, that is way not right, point two. Okay, so, <laughs> so we can get some elevation in our particle grid, our particle array, using an image uh, by util utilizing a fall off. And uh, again, just make sure your texture locator is matched up. Otherwise, if your texture locator is, you know, so I have my texture locator uh, selected, right? So if I press R, I can start scaling. You can see where, you know, this is repeating here and, and we don't want that. And, we want it like this and we want it center. We don't, you know, it's kind of cool that you can move this around, right? You can imagine this can be animated. So you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. But for now, we're just doing this. Okay, so um, so that's interesting. That's not actually what I want. I don't actually want that. So why did you do that, you say? Well, I just thought it was easy to visualize. So I'm actually gonna kill this particle modifier for now, but I'm gonna keep this here. And I'm gonna take my particle generator. I'm gonna add a sieve, right? So I'm going to add a sieve and I'm going to drag this down here, and I'm actually gonna clean up my item list here because this is just not way making me happy. Uh, okay, let's just have all the things we're working with in a row here. Meshes, replicators, fall offs, and PMODs. Now, I'm gonna start naming these guys because there's gonna be a number of them in here, and you, you really do have to keep organized. It, it needs a name that, you know, you could look at it in the schematic and not just know what it is, but also what the hell it's doing. So this sieve, I'll just call it sieve. I don't have to call it, I could save room by calling it sieve instead of particle sieve. And I'm going to call it um, 
sieve mountains. So I'm sieving out mountains here. And I'm going to duplicate the sieve mountains. I call this sieve ocean. So you can call it ocean or ground or whatever. I call it ocean. Mountains and oceans. That's what we're going to call our elevation here. So sieve mountains, sieve ocean. And I'm going to put the particle generator is going to be feeding into both of them. And also the fall off is going to feed into both of them. So you might be wondering, what does a fall off to have to do with the sieve? Well, I can take my sieve, and right now it defaults to particle ID. And uh, my replicator does not have anything going into it now, which so that's why you don't see anything. But um, so let's start with the uh, sieve mountains, right? So right now, particle ID is being is being sieved. So we don't want to deal with particle ID. We want to deal with fall off value. And so what the fall off value is doing is it's it's analyzing the fall off value from this plugged in fall off, right? Fall off value goes from zero to one. We're modulating that with a texture. So the white parts of the fall off, right? The white parts of Mr. Smiley Face, if you remember. Do I really have to do this? Probably not. I was going to show you out here. So um, these white parts, that's a fall off of one. The black parts is a fall off of zero, as you can imagine. And there's a little bit of you know, blurriness in between, um, between zero and one. So over here on setup, we just want to grab sieve mountains. We want to grab the mountains. Right now we're, we're grabbing the ocean, right? Because if the fall off is less than 0.5, so the lower values, 0 to 0.5, we're grabbing the ocean. So we actually want greater than 0.5. And so that's the mouth there. And so this is an either or situation, right? There's no, when we did the translation I just showed you, there's sort of a smooth gradient um, where those values, you know, when we, we moved it up, right? So this guy right here, when I had done this previously with the P mod, and I just translated them up in the Y, you know, there was a little bit of a, a nice smoothness there because this got zero translation. The gray's got a little bit of the translation. The white's got the full translation. But in the sieve, we're just, it's an either or. It's either, um, you know, that value is either greater than 0.5 or it's not. So I'm just, there's no, you're not grabbing half a particle anyway. You're just grabbing a bunch of particles. So we want to make sure we grab everything in that mountain range. So press channel hall and start dragging. Make sure we get that whole smiley face there. All those little gray values. And we don't want those, but we want up to about there, right? So up about, um, wow, zero. We don't want zero. Maybe uh, 0.1. That'll work. 0.01. Okay. That sounds good. And then this guy is going to be less than or equal to 0.01. And so if I replace uh, this particle source over here, now I have the ocean. Okay, so we're going to deal with these two things separately. Because if you look at um, his images, and I'm going to flip over there again, you know, you'll know you notice that, you know, again, the ocean ones, the floor, um, they're really small. And uh, they're just more densely packed together. And they're smaller. Um, where these are uh, uh, not just a higher, you know, larger Y scale, but the X and Z scale um, is larger than the ones on the floor as well. So we need to deal with these things separately. Um, and we're going to do that by separating them out at the very beginning based on this falloff value. So let's work with um, the mountains first. So we can put the mountains there. And I'm going to scooch these guys over because there's going to be a number of things in between here. So we're dealing with mountains. The first thing we need to do is scale these up a little bit, okay? Because they're bigger than the ones on the floor. So selecting the noodle, so we had noodle. I think that started with a shake back in the day. They called those noodles. And uh, I'm guessing people watching this have never even heard of shake at this point. <laughs> shake was sort of a, similar to nuke, but um, Apple bought shake and then they um, burned it in a bonfire and made some crappy editing program. No, 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 that's not true. I used it for years. It's great. Then they made a crappy editing program. No, 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 I'm just gonna start editing more. Okay, I, couldn't, I should not go on an editing tangent. Okay, so um, what am I doing? I'm gonna go to basic and I'm going to do some scaling here. So I've got the particle modifier here and I'm feeding in, um, you know, these sieved uh, particles and I want to move these up, right? So I've got my, my channel hall tool. I never turn it off. It's still active. So sometimes I just like to keep that active. So any channels I select will automatically pop in. I can start just dragging whatever I want the values to be because it's better than dragging these little guys here, which are almost useless. So I'm going to move these guys up. But when I move them up, so let's move them up. So I'm not moving them up. <laughs> I'm rotating them. And why? I don't want to rotate them. And why? I want to move them up. 
So I'm moving them up, but you'll notice that it's moving them all up at once. So I don't want to move them all up at once. I do want some fall off on there, so I can just reuse this fall off to attenuate the move. So I've used the fall off to isolate the particles. I'm also going to use the fall off to attenuate this move a little bit. So I get a little bit of an attenuation on um, using that image on this on this translation. So I'm moving back down just a little bit, and eh, something like that. Okay, that looks good. And I also want to scale them a little bit. So I'm going to scale them 150. Actually, you know what? I'm going to scale them quite a bit. 200 and 800 and 200. So they're very tall and they're much fatter than these guys, which if I put them in, you'll see that these are much smaller and not as um, uh, tall yet. So we'll keep working with these. So right now, they're all the same. Uh, there's there's just different altitudes because of the translation, but I don't really have any randomization going on yet. So I'm gonna do a little bit of randomization here. So again, select my uh, link, I almost call it a noodle. Uh, that is an outdated term and it really ages me. You must be in your 40s, you know what nuke is. Or no, uh, shake. Okay, so we're gonna add, add a uh, random PMOD here. Uh, double click, and so of course the random PMOD comes with default values, which obliterates what you're trying to do. So let me uh, put that back to zero. Zero control enter will zero, uh, zero that whole field out. Um, before I do that, though, I'm gonna name this. So that's not just particle modifier. We're calling this, um, we'll just call it basic, because that's what it is, it's a basic uh, PMOD. And we'll call it basic trans uh, mountain XZ scale and trans Y with fall off. Why not? Give it a long one. Actually, you know what? That's really long. We'll just do this. Uh, let's do this. Scale X, scale Z, T, Y. We don't need to put in fall off. So that's um, somewhat human, human readable there. Is it? Not really, but it's, it's better than just particle modifier. Um, so random is going to be random mountain, and we're going to say uh, scale Y or scale, yeah, we'll do uh, actually T, um, X, Y, Z, and also we'll do a little bit of random and scale Y here. So scale Y, let's do maybe a 50%. So this 50%, this is essentially... 50% more than the current value. And because we have the range is negative 100 to 100, it's 50% more or less than the current value. If I turn this to zero, it'll be just 50% more than the current value. And if I crunch this range, um, I have channel hall active here, it's gonna crunch everything all the way up. You know, if I do that up to just 100, every single one is going to be 50% more than current. So if I crunch it down to like, 61%, you're doing, you know, whatever, 60, uh, I'm not even doing the math here. So up to up to 100% of that, so up to 50% more than um, regular or up to an or about 30% more than regular if I'm doing my, my math right. But that's how you can use this range min to sort of max to crunch these ranges here. So I'm actually gonna go negative though because I want a, a fair amount of um, variation in these guys in the uh, Y scale and then, but not maybe not that much. I want them pretty long and thin, so maybe negative 40. And then I'm gonna do just a little bit of position and um, X and Z position here and Y actually. We'll just do these two first. So let's just drag a little, get a little bit of position and a little bit of Y to mix them up a little bit more. Okay, so, you know, not quite the vast uh, scale differences here, but you'll notice the density is much different here than what we're dealing with. This is much less dense, and we'll, we'll work on the density later, but right now we're just doing this. Okay, so um, now you notice I didn't change, randomize the uh, X and Z scale of these, and that's because I'm going to do that in a separate um, random modifier uh, node because I want to keep those uniform. Okay, I don't want, if you look at his, Lee Griggs' images, there aren't any thin ones. They're all, the X and Z is always scaled um, proportionally, right? Even though Y is scaled differently. So we're gonna add, this is the benefit of using a chain of PMODs instead of trying to do everything in the replicator. So let's add another random. Boom, boom, do our whole thing where we have to zero out the default value, zero control enter. And I'm gonna rename this, of course, random mountain. 
and this is uh, scale x z okay um, so uniform scaling and we'll do maybe 75 75 so a fair amount of scaling in x and z here and I may actually scale these down a little bit more of the change my range here my max down to five so I'm really getting just a negative into the scale of this range because uh, I thought they were looking a little too fat there so okay so that looks pretty good I may actually increase my y a little bit eh, maybe not that much okay so that looks pretty randomy there all right so that's looking pretty good um, now let's take a look at the ocean replace the particle source there we've got the ocean and if you look at um, uh, this one, they're really packed in there and they're really small. So this presents a couple of issues because if I was using a surface particle generator, so if you go over here to add item, we've got uh, particles, point clouds, surface particle generator, okay? Or in the shader tree, of course, there's also the add layer special service generator. What both of these do is they add particles on a surface. So if I had started, now I, I don't have any geometry in here except for uh, that cube. But if I had started with a plane, a subdivided plane, to get my particle array and used a surface particle generator or surface generator to populate particles on that plane, it's pretty easy to control density with those things. They sort of give you some um, closest, you know, some controls in there to control density. You could also use weight maps or images to control density of the particles. Whereas with PMODs, we're kind of, you know, again, with PMODs, I'm trying to show you how to use PMODs. This isn't, maybe isn't necessarily the best way to get this image. Um, you know, maybe a surface particle generator is a, is, a, is a better tool for this, but part of the reason I'm doing this tutorial is to show you how you use PMOD. So, and of course you could actually use a surface particle generator um, if we had a plane here. You could actually modify surface particle generated particles with PMODs. You could just plug them into a particle source here. But I'm starting with an array because I think it's a little more challenging and a little more interesting in terms of doing this tutorial. So enough of that. How do we do this? How do we get greater density down here? Um, you know, there's a couple of things we could do. I could do a, a separate particle generator and feed it into the particle source with greater density, but I'm actually going to try something else. We're going to actually select this guy and, you know, here's our count, right? 64, 64, let's do um, 128 and 128. So we've quad quadrupled our density. You can see we just sort of filled it up here. Um, and I'm actually going to select my replicator item and the display density, I'm just going to put down to like 5% because I just don't need to see a lot of these right now. Um, now with the increased density, uh, I, I think I need to shrink down my prototype just a little bit. So I'll show my prototype here. And if you go to polygon mode, the polygons will pop into V. You can select them or, or just you don't have to actually because... Obviously, in mode if nothing is selected, everything is selected in this layer, so all polygons are selected. I'm just going to shrink this dude down a little bit. Try and let me push in here and see where I'm at in terms of density. We are going to overlap them, but we're going to do it with a uh, um, some modifiers. So maybe just just something like that. So now these are are super dense, right? Super dense, much denser. In fact, we go back out here; those are much denser. Uh, of course, the problem is if I, you know, that same grid is feeding our mountain particles, so those guys are much denser too, which um, actually that looks better because more density gives us that sort of look here. But, you know, like, like I said, we're trying to do a, a even greater density down here, which, and maybe I'm wrong, it just appears that there's greater density, but either way, we're, we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how to do greater density down there. So let me um, get the ocean back in here. And let's add a little bit of randomness here. So select this guy and do a random. And we'll drag this. Oh, we don't have to drag it, but there it is. And okay, I'm going to name it random ocean. Uh, translation X, Y, Z. And uh, scale in uh, X and, and Z. And maybe even just a tiny bit of. No, we'll just do that do that okay so again let's zero out these zero control uh, enter and I'm gonna push in a little bit just so I can view these guys up close and see what's going on um, you know these are you know these locators are just these PMOS you can always just 
click drag to hide those. That's cool. Uh, so let's do a little randomization here. So let's, uh, I'm gonna stick with uniform scaling and scale all these guys just a little bit, maybe 15%, um, 20 and 15, greater than normal. So there's not a huge amount of difference there, but you, I don't really see a huge amount in his, in his smaller ones. They're very squarish, right? Um, you know, maybe 20, maybe about 20, 30, 20, something like that. And then let's get some various overlapping going on by say 0 0.05, 0 0.005, um, make it a little more. In fact, we can grab these two and, and use say T for our, uh, our not T, I just do uh, C for our, our tool. Drag these up a little bit, our channel hall tool. Um, so this is effectively moving them, I think I'm moving them apart too much. Let's see, just a little bit random. Then we, we'll adjust our scales to fill in those gaps a little more. So there's a little bit of randomness, just a little bit on Y, not a lot, just a little bit. Uh, because they're pretty flat if you look at this here. So just a little bit on Y. And then I'm gonna bring up my uh, scales a little bit just to fill in those gaps. A little more, a little more. Um, and one of the things that you see is going on here is I've got my range of negative 100 to 100. So I'm not just scaling them up, I'm scaling them up and down. So these guys are scaling down, well, some of these are scaling up. So what does this tell me? This tells me I need to um, break these uh, random transforms into two different operations because I want to control the range a little bit for. I like the position be going negative and positive, but scaling I just want positive. So I'm going to duplicate this guy. You can just should be able to do control D, duplicate. So um, the, the connections aren't quite right. We want to unplug that and then grab this guy and go to the uh, input there. And over here, we're just going to deal with um, the translation. And over here, let's turn our translation to zero. And we're gonna deal with the scaling. But the scaling, we actually want the range to be just zero to 100. I just want things to get bigger. I don't want anything to get smaller. So zero to 100, now I've filled in the gaps here, right? The gaps are full. In fact, they're really full. So I may even drag these down a little bit. Just drag. Again, your channel hall tool is probably still active. If not, just press C. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. So that's looking like a really sort of dense um, ocean. And then if I pull out a little bit and bring in um, my mountains, there's my mountains. So now I think my mountains are a little... Now, again, I think this actually looks pretty good, but I'm going under the premise that um, my oceans are denser than my mountains. So how do I... Get rid of some of these guys. You know, I'm not using a surface particle generator. I'm not using a or a surface generator either in the shader tree. I'm just using a grid uh, of particles essentially. And the grid for these mountains is the same grid for this ocean. All right, it's just one grid here. So one thing you could do is is do multiple particle generators and, and stream them that way. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a different method here. So we've got our mountains and. I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to, over here in the shader tree, I'm going to add a processing layer called variation texture. And this is based on a variation source particle. That's particle ID is what it's basing that on. So let's edit the gradient and just zero. Let's do some uh, complementary colors here, maybe purple, and then we'll just go right across the axis to green. And you'll notice, um, even in, in fact, I'm going to plug in my ocean so you can notice this even uh, more clearly. Particle ID is going left to right, up to top to bottom, right? So it's, it's not very random here, right? We just have a variation of, of colors, but it's not a, um, the particle ID is very ordered. So I go over here to my particle generator and say, particle ID sequential. We don't want sequential, we want random all of a sudden. Hey, it's looking pretty interesting. I like that. That looks good. So we have a random particle ID going on. And let me switch um, with the mountain here. So we've got some random particle IDs here. So 
what I want to do is I'm just using this variation texture just to kind of see that the particle IDs are random not randomized. I'm going to select my uh, little link there and do a sieve. And this particular sieve, now you'll notice right off the bat, um, I'm, I'm sieving on particle ID right off the bat. So if I put this less than one, less than 0.5, I'm keeping every particle in there with an ID less than 0.5, which on our uh, variation texture, um, you know, I'm getting rid of everything greater than 0.5, so I'm getting rid of all these green ones. And so if you go back over here and say, if I keep everything less than one, I'm keeping everything, right? But I wanna thin the herd here a little bit. I wanna thin these out. And so I'm going to press my channel hole tool, and I'm gonna select the uh, channel, and I'm gonna press my channel hole tool, and I'm going to start dragging to the left, and I'm going to get rid of, get rid of some of these green ones, some of these larger particle IDs. And so because, like I said, going over here, it appears to me that these higher altitudes are, are less dense than the lower altitudes, so we're lessening the density of our higher altitude. Okay, so there we go. I think that's enough, 0.6, we'll just stick with that. And uh, remember to name this guy. So again, I'm gonna move it up here because it's a mountain guy. So we'll say, um, sieve, remove, remove particles by ID. Okay, that's pretty descriptive. And so we've, we've lessened the density there. Um, so now we're at a point where we need to combine these two guys back into you know one cohesive particle array to feed into our replicator. Uh, we could of course do two replicators. So you know that's one thing you could do is you can add um, another replicator, particle replicator, and throw this guy down here, and and you know we've got the same prototype, and I could do this. So and and that maybe is something that uh, you're going to want to do. But right now we're going to keep this. We're going to uh, keep this with one final replicator just to sort of keep in the spirit of, of the Maya one and not use awesome Moto abilities to out, outdo them. Although I'm sure you could do something like that in Maya too. So, um, but you know, how do we bring these together? I think I already showed you how to do this. You can use a, you can use any one of these really particle modifiers, except multiple particle sources and we'll aggregate them together. So previously I think we used a basic to bring them together. I'm going to use a random you know, and I'll show you why. And so we'll call this random um, combiner, random particle ID, PID, particle ID. Um, and we'll just keep that at the bottom there. And we'll drag this guy in. I keep saying we. It's, that's got to be more annoying to you guys than it is to me, but it's just, uh, there's no we here. Anyway, uh, so particle ID. So we got a particle source here, and that's these guys. And let's throw this into the replicator. I'm sort of getting too far along here. Again, our default random has randomized those too much. We don't want that. I'm going to hook up uh, the other stream of particles to a particle source. And what that's going to do is combine them. But you'll see the particle IDs are a little goofy. Um, all of the ones from this stream are at a very uh, far end of the spectrum, right? The very low end of the spectrum here. And what we need to do is what I need to do is randomize the particle ID. So boom, particle ID is randomized and um, all these guys now have random particle IDs. So, you know, they're distributed evenly, I should say, among uh, both streams. You know, the reason this is important is we're gonna be using, of course, random, uh, the particle IDs to help randomize the texturing a little bit. So this is looking pretty good so far. Um, let's do one more thing. So let's say we want, okay, you know, these are our hero um, particles right here, we'll call them the elevation ones, uh, the mountains. Let's say we want to add a little more variation to um, the ocean here. So again, easy enough, we can just uh, bring in a, a basic PMOD. And that's interesting, I didn't uh, seem to add it in between that time. Not sure why, but we'll go like this, and like this, and like this, and bring it in between there. Um, in fact, I'm going to skip the random particle IDs and feed that into the replicator just so I can focus on these guys right here. Let me uh, change that name to basic um, hills, T, Y. Okay, so 
I'm going to use this guy to bring up some hills. I'm just going to use a fall off in my basic translation, right? So if I bring in a, uh, we'll just say a radio fall off, use my radio fall off, drag it into the schematic. I'm going to actually pull it up here just so it's out of the way a little bit. Um, and feed that into the fall off right here. And the radio fall off is actually a decent size to begin with, but I'm going to move this, uh, oh, let's say, over this way. And then when I change something here, we'll just change the TY, translation Y. You know, I'm pushing these up right, <laughs> right on the eyeball, not really where I wanted it. Um, so let's don't do eyeball, let's do sort of lower left chin area here. So you can see how that's where that's going. And um, you know, with the, the solid core is an interesting parameter on the spherical fall off where we could bring in a solid core and bring these this sort of plateau up a little bit. Maybe I'll uh, move the radius down a little and just move this over a little bit. So again, just, just like I said, you can go through and you can use images. I can actually, um, of course, take my radio fall off here and create an item mask if I want to manipulate the uh, fall off values a little more with an image or even a procedural texture. So let's just do, um, noise and we'll keep it simple by going to simple and uh, you can see there's a little bit of a change there I'm actually gonna lower the scale to say 0.3 whoops what did I just do I just changed that 0.3 uh, go back to perspective view here and you can see I'm getting a little bit of variation right there so um, you know again maybe I need to uh, increase the uh, Y scale here since these guys are moving up, and so you can kind of see how we can we can start, you know, adding to our terrain using fall offs and textures and images and things like that. So you know, we can again, if we need to get these guys scaled in Z and X, I can add a, a random guy here, another random scale. We'll call that a random. Do a random there and put it. Uh, we'll just do random hill scale X Z. So that's in the mix, and of course, we've got our default values we've got to get rid of, zero control return. Um, so let's do some uniform scaling, and I actually just want to make these bigger. So zero to 100% of these values, let's say 50% larger than normal, 50% larger than normal. So now these guys are a little bit larger than these guys down. Oops, they're not actually a little bit larger. I need to keep my fall off and uh, going here. So now these guys are a little larger than the ocean guys down here. So my fall off is going to continue to um, isolate these guys, the modifications I'm making to this area, right? Maybe 200, 200 to really crank them up kind of big. So, all right, so then of course we can aggregate these here at the particle source and, and get the IDs all randomized again. And so, okay, so I'm gonna stop there with the sort of terrain building, so again, this isn't as sophisticated as this, but we're gonna get there, all right? We're just sort of figuring out ways to do this. So we figured out ways to use images and procedural textures to move and isolate parts of this grid to move and scale things and how to separate out um, uniform scaling from non-uniform scaling and um, using ranges in the, in the uh, random uh, scale node or random particle random mods uh, nodes and uh, we also learned how to you know, weed out the density by the sieve, using a sieve and particle ID and a random particle ID to, to sort of weed out some of this stuff. Right now that's looking a little bit um, not quite dense enough. So of course you can always go back in here and, and make that a little bit denser. Put some more of those back in there like that. Um, and uh, then how to combine them all together at the end. So. Let's stop there and let's move on to shading.